All right, lesson seven in module three is on understanding equations. So before we really dive into solving them, and we kind of touched on it in some other modules, but before we really under dive into solving equations, we gotta understand what an equation is, okay? Um, and so what is an equation? Um, basically, an equation sets, let me say, two expressions equal. Okay, I'm writing small for some reason, but sets two expressions equal. Remember, an expression, um, it doesn't have an equal sign. It has some freedom, right? I could say 3x minus 2. That's an expression. I put a 1 in there, I get 3 times 1 minus 2. I can put a 2 in there, I get 3 times 2 minus 2. I can put a 10 in there, 3 times 10 minus 2. So we have all these different possible um, answers to it. I also could have another expression. Let's say we have, I don't know, um, 4x plus 8. I don't know. That's an expression too, okay? So this here is an expression. Expression, again, like I said before, you know, we can put a bunch of different things for x. Over here, guess what this is? It's an expression. We can also substitute in a bunch of different numbers for x. But then if I put this equal sign in between them, this whole thing then becomes an equation. Okay, it sets two expressions equal to each other. Now we're limited. We can't put whatever we want in for x because we have to make sure that it equals this side. Remember, whatever this side is, has to equal this side. Got to keep them in balance. Okay, so when with equations, we have solutions. Okay, and what is a, what is a solution? What does a solution mean? Well, it's basically, um, it makes it true. Okay, it's the number or value that makes the equation true. And that's what we're going to first start focusing on. What does it mean for it to be true? Okay, well make sure this side and this side have to be the same. They have to be equal to each other. Okay, so it's not when we just have this expression where we can put whatever value we want in for x with an um, equal sign in there with an equation. We have a number, a value that is a true statement. Now remember, these variables right here, this three times x and this four times x, this x right here, that variable, that's just, that's a number, that's a value. We just don't know what it is, so we represent it with the letter x. It's not like we just put x into equation, it's an unknown number, okay? So let's talk about what it means to be true. It says check whether the given values of the solution, given, check whether the given value is a solution to the equation. So what they're saying is, hey, if you take 48 and you plug it in here for x, so if x equals 48, is it a solution? Does it make it true? So what you do is you plug it in C. So I'm going to go one third times the quantity X, but X is 48 plus four. And I'm wondering, does that equal 20? Well, order of operations here, 48 plus four is 52. And if I go one third times 52, does that equal 20? So if I grab my calculator here, Okay, and I'm just going to, multiplying by a third is the same thing as dividing by three. If I type that in there, and I know you can't see it, but I get approximately, well, I get 17.3 repeating in a calculator. Does that equal 20? Okay, 17 and a third. No. So does this given value, is that the given value a solution to the equation? No. It's not a solution. Okay, because when we plug it in, when we substitute it in, we don't get a true statement. 17.3 repeating does not equal 20. That's what we mean by solution. Let's try this next one. Now we have x equals negative 5.5, and, and just for easiness, I'm going to change it to negative 5.5 because 1 half is the same thing as 0.5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 0.5 and I'm going to substitute it in for x. I'm wondering, is negative 5.5 the missing value? So 3 
times, I'm going to use parentheses, you can use that or a dot, negative 5.5 minus 1. Does that equal, so see I'm copying this right down here, 5 times negative 5.5 plus 10. All right, now we just follow order of operations, multiply first. So if we multiply um, negative, I'm sorry, three times a negative 5.5, I just typed that into a calculator, I get negative 16 and a half, negative 16.5 minus one. Does that equal, well, five times a negative 5.5 is a negative 27.5. Again, I just use a calculator, plus 10. So now, I'm gonna, if I have negative 16.5 and minus one, that's negative 17.5. Does that equal, if I have negative 27.5, so if I'm down at negative 27.5 and I come back 10, I'm at negative 17.5. Does negative 17.5 or negative 17 and a half equal negative 17 and a half? Yes. So is this value right here a solution? Yes. All right, so that's the difference between being a solution and not a solution. So a lot of times people think they have to do more work, but the answer is just really a yes or no question. A solution makes an equation true. All right, let's look at the next example real quick. Maybe. All right, so we are going to do some tape diagrams. It says the ages of three sisters are consecutive integers. Consecutive means in order. The sum of their ages, answer to addition problems, is 45. So we want to calculate those ages. So if it says use a tape diagram, if we are talking about the sisters, three sisters, we're going to have the youngest, then we're going to have the middle child, and then we're going to have the oldest. So let's let the youngest, we're going to say her tape diagram here, her box, we're going to call that X. The middle child is as old as the youngest child, so we're going to say that's X, but she's a year older and just one year older because it's consecutive, meaning in order. So the oldest also is X. And not only is she one year older, but she's another year older. So you can see what we've added on every year. So we know that all together their ages are 45. Okay, so if we want to, let's start with the youngest. Okay, the youngest, if we take 45 and let's get rid of these three, okay? If we subtract three off, that means it's 42. And so these three boxes, if we take 42 and divide it by three, we get 14. That means the youngest has to be 14 years old. Well, the middle child here is one more than 14, so that would be 15, and the oldest child is two more than 14, which would be 16. Okay, so that's a visual with a tape diagram. And I put the X's in there, you didn't necessarily have to do that. Okay, so now let's use that to write an equation, kind of like we've done in the past. So if the youngest sister is X years old, it says describe the age of two other sisters in terms of X. Okay, so let's write this off to the side. Youngest, we're going to say is X. The middle child, remember, is X plus 1, which means the oldest is X plus 2. All right, so we have our expressions set up. Now, we also, when we write this equation, we wanna keep in mind that the sum of their ages, the sum of their ages, um, so we're gonna use these three expressions and set it equal to 45, because that's the sum of their ages. Sum of their ages. Sum means add. So I'm gonna take x here, and I'm gonna add it to x plus one, because that's the middle child, and then I'm going to add that to the oldest child, x plus 2. And all together, that has to equal 45. This expression equals this expression. Okay? So now, it says, in part C, we'll finish up here, determine if your answer from part A is the solution to the equation you wrote in part B. So my answer in part A for the youngest sister was 14. 
Okay, so x equals 14. Is that, is that work for my equation down here? So basically, if I input x, or input 14 for each of my x's, and solve, does it equal 45? Let's see. Is 14 plus 14 plus 1 plus 14 plus 2 equal to 45? 14 plus 15 plus 16. Guess what? That equals 45. Okay, so yes, it is a solution. Um, our solution here of x equals 45 is, is a solution because it makes a true statement. When we substitute it in, we do equal 45 for our answer.